I hereby call to order this June 10th, 2024 Whitman Housing Authority meeting. This meeting is being recorded. Roll call. Michelle, are you here? Yeah. Terry, are you here? Here. Yeah. Patty, are you here? Present. I am here and Bob is here in spirit. Before we start tonight's meeting, we have to reorganize the board. So right now we're all on equal playing field. I'd be happy to make a motion to um, nominate um, Catherine Kelleher to be chairperson. Second. Motion by Patty, second by Michelle to make Catherine Kelleher chairwoman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I make a motion to make Patricia McKay vice chairwoman. Second motion. Motion by myself, second by Michelle to make Patricia uh, vice chairwoman. All in favor? Aye. I make a motion to make Teresa Linsky treasurer. A second motion. Motion by myself. Seconded by Michelle, Teresa Linsky is here by the treasurer. I make a motion to make, oh, all in favor, I'm sorry. Aye. 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 I make a motion to make Michelle Frazier assistant treasurer. And I will second that. Motion by myself, second by Patty to make Michelle assistant treasurer. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Congratulations, everybody. Which means in Eileen's spare time, you two will have to go to the bank and get put on the account. <laughs> it's simple. It's just time consuming. So the board is hereby organized. Board review and vote of the minutes of the regular board meeting for May 13th, 2024. I'll make a motion to accept the um, meetings of the board, um, the board meeting for May 13th, 2024. Second motion. Motion by Patty, second by Michelle to accept the minutes of the meeting for May 13th, 2024. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Financial reports, May 2024 vouchers, April 2024 bank balances, April 2024 financial statements. We will do them in A, B, and C. Nothing jumped out at me. Did anyone else have any questions? I didn't see that again. Nope. Eileen, anything you'd like to go over? Um, no, I think everything is pretty clear. In that case, I'll make a motion to accept the financial reports May 2024 vouchers, April 2024 bank balances, and April 2024 financial statements, A, B, and C. A second the motion that we accept financial reports A, B, and C. Motion by Terry, second, excuse me, motion by Patty, seconded by Terry to accept financial reports A, B, and C. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Board vote to approve certificate of substantial completion on the Pine Circle Meter Breaker Replacement Project Number 338092, pending approval of the engineer John Murphy. What page is that on, please, if anybody no, knows? That, that it hasn't even been created yet. So, oh, okay. Um, there is no form. Okay. But because we only meet once a month. Um, John Murphy did come out. I think um, he has to come out for, to do the punch list. Um, but John had walked around, and, I mean, most of the majority of their work is completed. I think they might have to just label um, the switches, and that's probably about it. So, um yeah, if the board's willing to um, vote on the substantial completion. That's a nice, easy punch list and very important to tag those switches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know that all too well. Okay. 
So do I hear a motion to accept the substantial completion pending John's final punch list with John Murphy? I'll make a motion that we accept the certificate of substantial completion on the Pine Circle meter breaker project number 338092 pending approval by the engineer, John Murphy. Second the motion. Motion by Terry, second by Michelle that we accept, we approve the certificate of final completion for Pine Circle meter breaker replacement project pending approval by engineer John Murphy. And once John Easter approves it, it we're good to go. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Board discuss and vote on change order number one on the Belmont Street Masonary Repair Project 338097 in the amount of $9,478.70 pending ACAT manager Kate Ferreira's approval. Okay, so um, I met Kate at the property um, and the contractor um, pointed out to us, um, page 19. Mm -hmm. um, the contractor pointed out to us um, where there was a lot of open gaps, we saw some um, water going into the garage. Mm. So it's all around the windows needs to be done um, and sealed. There was there was a lot. He did show us a lot. So it was not something really that we knew about prior. Um, he had done a power wash of all the brick, and um, you know of the of the whole like that any any of the brick was was cleaned off. So then you know it's, you you saw more some more of what needed to be done. So the original contract amount was $11,111. This is a change order of 86% of, um, of that original 11,000. So it's gonna be about 20,000. Um, I looked at what we had originally in the budget when we went out to bid and we had $20,000 and something. Um, added these together, but I think this was $500 more than we had in our budget. Um, so Kate came back from, um, she was on vacation uh, for the past week. So I said, you know what? I looked at what we had in the budget for it. It's about $500 over. It's not like we're going to be going out to bid to, to do this kind of work anytime soon. Mm -hmm. He's there. He found it. It's a problem. Yep. I'm okay with fixing it. He still was the low bidder. Everybody, we had people with bids over twenty thousand mm -hmm. uh, dollars, and it did not include this. So the fact that it's right around, right around what we had in the budget, just off by like five hundred dollars. Um, I said I'm okay with it. If you're okay with it, she said the same thing. Well, it's a lot of work. She sealed all the masonry on the home with commercial grade masonry sealant. That's a lot. Of so work. he's going to repoint the entire house. Um. I don't think it's every around every single brick because oh, there's a lot of areas that are absolutely fine, but especially around the windows, especially where water would hit, um, you see, that's where you saw most of the deterioration. Um, but like I said, you could see in the garage there was actually there was actually water on the floor of the garage. Um, are the gutters okay? So um, he did actually. I think he repaired a gutter because there was an issue with a gutter. Um, right. So he he could see that a gutter was causing you know, some of it, but, um, he did point everything out. There was definitely, it definitely needs to be done. It's not something that our guys, uh, you know, that they do every day. So to have someone that does it and uses the right materials, um, yeah, that like would... I said, it's in, you know, we're $500 of a budget, which is, um, not so bad. And that would freeze up in the winter and cause a hazard too. Yep. If the water pools. Yep. But it's it is up to you guys for sure. Well, fortunately, it was already you know still within the budget, so that's a good thing. Well, like five hundred dollars mm -hmm. over over what was in that capital right. plan. Close enough. But, yeah, but yeah. yeah. The water gets in between those bricks for a year. It's going to cost us a heck of a lot. Oh yeah, more. then there'll be mold and oh. Like I said, it 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 may not be a priority. Well, it would be a priority, but we we always have priorities. Right. Um, so. It's a matter of which priority is worse. Right. And so we may not have the have the funds yeah. down the line. Just We're, drop just yeah. drop the deterioration is right. a good idea. Yeah. He's gonna repair all the existing brick. 
Yeah, and it, you could see that. You could see where it was kind of breaking away. The cement breaks down over yeah. time. Yeah. Stetson Terrace porches are a prime example of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, I wish we could do some CPA on that. I know. Remember, we already we already put that out there, didn't we? No, yeah. we talked about it, but. What did we put out there that they said no to? Like that could have been it. The paving at Pine Circle was a no. Right. I thought it was the... Um, I thought it was the doors, maybe. I don't think we did the doors. No, I think the doors was in question, but... There again, the fire doors? No, the I, entrance and exit I thought doors. we gave... I thought we gave at least two or three options. Okay. I thought it was the... Um, I thought it was the steps. It could have been. The it could steps have been. and pine circle. And the railings. Yeah, and the they, steps. You know, if yeah. certain things are maintenance, they're not preservation, it's... Well, and I think so. it's too. I mean, then it's not supposed to be um, like the outdoor, the outdoor kind of work, or site work. Right, right. right. So, so by October, we have to find something great. I know. Yeah. I definitely, I definitely, I'll probably, maybe the next meeting, um, I'll put out there what projects we have sitting, waiting. Um, right. To be addressed and, and we can kind of check against the CPA website yep. and see if there's something else that's relevant that we know is accepted. Yeah. Before we get to the pre-application process. Right. Okay. I'll make a motion um, to accept the change order for the repair and sealant. Um, it was, excuse me, question seven. Question seven, which is project number three three eight zero nine seven in the amount of nine thousand four hundred and seventy eight dollars and seventy cents. Second the motion. Motion by Patty, second by Terry to approve the change order number one for Belmont Street Masonry Repair in the amount of $9,478.70, pending RCAP manager Kate's approval. Kate's already approved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Board discuss to increase weekly compensation. Weekly compensation. Let's try this again. For carrying the beeper, effective July 1st, 2024. Okay, so we have, I think, to carry the beeper, I think um, John got 50 and Mike and Zach got 30. Um, and they've brought it up to me before because they get calls in the middle of the night. They, they get a lot of calls. Sure. They don't have to come out for every one of them, but um, and a lot of times John would be the decision maker. You know, they'd reach out, John, I got the call, what do you think? And, you know, he'd tell them, yeah, definitely go. Uh, you know, most of them, they can make the decisions themselves also, but there was, you know, the ones that were kind of iffy um, would go to John. So um, there was a study done by other housing authorities in 2022, so two years ago. So the average to carry the beeper um, was $100, and that was two years ago. Um, I think that's fair. Is it per month or per week? Um, so it's per week. So it'd be $5,200 in total, um, a hundred dollars to whoever is carrying the beeper because mm -hmm. they do, you know, um, they would still get, if they had to come in and do something, they would, um, still, you know, they would get paid, but just to carry the beeper. Right. Um, but you know, it's up to you guys. I know that, um, like I said, they do get a lot of calls and I don't know why I have to actually send out the, um, work order policy again because we've got people calling them for work orders on a Saturday and a Sunday. I mean, not even emergencies. Right, um, right, right. So, right. I don't know, but it's up to you guys. Do you remember that 14 below night? Here I am getting off track, which I know the town disapproves of. That 14 below night where Mikey got the phone call because the lady's heat wasn't working and she couldn't figure out how to use a remote control for her TV. Oh, that's so bad. Yeah. Oh, oh, I, all right, yep. Yeah, see, that's not an emergency. A dripping faucet's not an emergency. Oh, my no, God. No, her, her apartment was warm. Yes. It was the she remote. Want, yeah, she wanted she someone to come out and fix her remote. Oh, dear. At like 3.30 in the morning that oh. weekend, it was like 14 below. 
I, I don't have a problem with in, increasing their weekly compensation. If they're going to be woken up in the middle of the night and they're, they're, they're married to the beeper. They are is for it, the full is week. It, is it somebody different who takes the beeper every night? No, every week. So they have it for a week. Okay. So whoever had the beeper for the week would get a hundred dollars stipend for carrying the beeper. Mm -hmm. um, if they never had to come in for a work order, but they answered questions on the phone, I said, you know what, that can that's not considered an emergency. We, we'll send someone over tomorrow morning, whatever. Um, they, but when they have, when also when they have the beeper. Um, they have to stay in the area. They can't go away. They can't go down, you know, camping down in Plymouth. They need to be in the working world. And they can't switch off weeks with another guy. If they were going on vacation, they would yeah. do that. Yeah, but, that's um, good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good with that. I'll make a motion to um, increase the weekly compensation, compensation for the carrying of the beeper as of July 1st, 2024. Second. And that amount is a hundred dollars, correct? Yes. Okay. Sorry, I missed that on the first shot. Increase it to a hundred dollars. Okay. Motion by Patty, second by Michelle, that we hereby increase the basic amount to carry the beeper to one hundred dollars. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Board vote to accept the following public notices. PHN 2024-07. Page 20. I'm on there. Okay. Assignments of 760 CMR 6.00. Yeah, that's a hard word. From, from, from you. Promulgation. From Promulgation. Okay. And PPN 2024-08, amendments to state aid, public house, leasing, and lease amendum. Addendum. Addendum. Nice. Well, let me go. untie my tongue, sorry. Go to the director's report. Hey, okay. Okay. So, and public housing notice... 2024-07. Uh, so um, the state, actually, it's dated May 16th, but that is not the date that it was actually issued. They gave us about um, 10 days to uh, make a lot of changes, which really we haven't even had time to change. The software company um, is working on updating. Um, but the following changes um, are, were, uh, were effective on June 7th. Changes to certain definitions contained in the regulations, significant changes to the way rent is determined, increase in funding for local tenant organizations, update to lease obligations to correspond with changes in the law, updated peak, um, deduction schedule. So they're um, targeting electric heat. So if you have, um, if someone has electric heat and they're now, you know, using the air source heat pump type heating systems, they're getting a um, higher um, deduction, heat deduction. And this mostly just affects the families. Um, and actually, it will affect Pine Circle because they pay their electric bill. But then actually, no, we pay for the heat bill. So they don't. So yeah, so it would just affect the families. But um, among the next one, amendments to the state aided public housing lease and lease addendum. Um, due to the changes um, in 760 CMR, um, they've had to make significant changes to the lease and lease addendum, and um, the changes include the following update to utility section to reflect new heat schedule, update the personal care attendance schedule to align with changes to the definition of PCA in 760 CMR. So, Update to appliance sections to reflect changes in the state sanitary code. Update the language regarding the over income household exemption to align with the changes in 760 CMR 6.06. .06. A lot, there's a lot of changes. Um, it's pretty daunting the amount. Um, I believe one of these came with um, six attachments. 
So I didn't print them all out to you because it was um, ridiculous how much there was. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so six, yeah, six attachments. Um, once again, we're totally overwhelmed with um, everything that's being thrown at us. Um, the changes that they gave no time to even implement. Um, I have to give tenants 30 day notice uh, to the changes. And then if they request a redetermination of their rent then we have to do their rent over, uh, we have to have them sign a new lease and um, a lease addendum. So a lot of work. We're in the middle of these certifications right now. Right. So the people that Shailene finished prior to June 7th mm -hmm. had some, these roles and after had these different roles. So it's just a bit of a nightmare. It's a nightmare time for us um, to have to do something like this. We have the same thing going on with Harvard Court and all the changes with, with Harvard Court. Um, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. So we are doing our best. Um, but, I, I mean, I don't know how quickly that we can do everything that they want us to do. But well, we are doing the best that we can. A lot of it doesn't affect many people. Um, one of the big changes was the state only looked at um, student uh, tuition fees for um, students who had who were in the vocational schools rather than colleges. So now they have added regular you know, two-year to four-year college. Um, they have changed the regulation that if they are a student is working part-time and if they are, actually, if they're going to school half-time, so they don't have to have four classes, they need to have at least two classes, we will then not take their income for anywhere from, you know, one year to um, 10 years. That we would not take their income if it took them 10 years. So it's, um, so we're probably going to see less rent coming in from the families because they get more deductions, more deductions in heat, more deductions uh, um, in the students. It's just, there's a big, there's a big long list. It's hard, it was hard to even. But it benefits break the that tenants. Down. It benefits. Income wise. Yes, it does. And rent wise. So, how many of the family units have the split heat pumps? Um, no one presently. So, they would get, um, like Pine Haven Drive pays gas heat. So, they would get the regular, um, they would get the new amount. They haven't looked at it. I think I read. Well, we pay for their heat. Or no, they pay for their heat. The family units. The families okay. pay for their heat. Um, they have not looked at the heat schedule in 40, no, 30 years, 30 years, 30 years. It hasn't heat, changed. Heat, heat's a big expense. Yeah, There's no way around it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I am glad that they're looking because they're pushing the ESO's heat pumps. Now we have, we have a, um, oil heat at Fullerton Ave, second floor. Um, eventually, eventually we, we wanted to change it to gas, but they wouldn't let us, mm -hmm. um, so that is something that we're going to have to, um, at some point, you know, change. Um, they will no longer give us funding for gas. So the other two units there have gas heat. Um, it's much more affordable. They will not allow us to replace that with um, gas heat. So we will have to go with uh, split heat pumps. So that tenant would then benefit with getting a little bit, I think it's 2 to $400 or something a year difference. Um, so I'm happy to see that they're recognizing that electric heat is a lot more expensive yeah. than gas and even oil. Can you imagine the bill though to heat a three bedroom apartment with a good size living room, a good size kitchen and, and a big pantry with and, gas, I mean with electric? And don't forget all of their elect electricity from TVs and hair dryers and everything else it's all in one bill. That's a really large it's like bill. Like six hundred a month or more. Yeah. Easy. So that's it's Easy. Gonna, it's very difficult for them to pay one bill. And when you get two bills, you go, okay, I'll pay this one this week, and in two weeks I'll pay the other one. Yep. Um, but Electric when you have it all on one bill, that's it's gonna hurt. That's yeah. gonna hurt. And they're gonna get behind. And. But even with a low income discount, that is not fair to do to people. Yeah. We don't have a choice. 
Nope. That's the way the state wants it. I'll, uh, I'll make a motion to uh, accept the following public housing notices, PHN 2024-07 and PHN 2024-08. Second. Motion by Patty, second by Michelle to accept PHN 2024-07, PHN 2024-08, and the girls in the office will do it as soon as they can, but they got very heavy plates right now. All in favor? Aye. Executive Director's Report. Page 38. Okay, so once again, uh, Champ has uploaded, updated its application. <clears throat> it's 28 pages um, to make it easier for um, applicants. 28 pages. Um, so... Um, I'm sorry, I'm really not too prepared for this meeting. I apologize. Do not apologize. Because of the new leases. It's everything. I'm, I'm, you know, we had someone out for two weeks, more than two weeks. So it's, it's a lot. Eileen, you're human. So you I mean, uh, this update with Champ, it's because of all the new lease policies, all the updates. No, yeah, no, it doesn't have anything to do with that. Um, they keep trying to make it better. Uh -huh. um, and it somehow seems to make more work for us to be truthful and for the applicants. I had someone call last week and she's been on the list for three plus years and she um, was a victim of domestic violence in a um, shelter and she asked if I could look her up and I said, you know, I said, we don't give numbers anymore because we have, you know, 30, is it 37,000? We thought it was 28,000 last month. No, we were up to almost 34,000 last oh, month. Oh, definitely, definitely over, it's definitely over 32,000. Um, I said, I, I'll go in and look at your history and see that you're in there correctly. So I called her and I said, um, you're not in as an emergency. And she started crying. Oh. So three years she's been on there. And she's, you know, had... Um, you know, workers at the shelter helping her, but nobody, no, she says, why didn't anyone else ever tell me? She says, I've been calling people. And I said, you know what? I said, the employees at housing authorities are overwhelmed, you know, but I feel bad. If someone asked me, I just want to confirm that they're in there correctly. Right. And she just, you know, she just said, thank you so much. She says, I, she says, I, I just can't even believe that. And she was just crying. Yeah, but not every housing authority is lucky enough to have an Eileen. She didn't check the right box, or she missed box a box. That she didn't check. Oh. One box that she didn't check. So um, oh. that one box kept her from um, getting an emergency priority, which means she was sitting there going nowhere ever because, oh. you know, you're not going to come to the top of the list. So, Especially when yeah, it says problem. in the past, if you did not select all five, you would not be considered actually homeless. Yep. Yep. So what's her, I mean, in general, what's her status now? That so I, I told her to go in and to check that box off. Mm -hmm. um, and I told her to reach out to ASG, who is the company that does the screening. And... Um, Hopefully they'll screen her. I don't know if they if they will bring her back effective to the date that she's that she um because actually she did write that she was in a emergency. She told that she put her situation in there. In the narrative, but she right. didn't check she a box. Didn't check off that right. one one box, one out of the five boxes she didn't check off. Oh gosh. So she just was sitting there going nowhere. Oh. It's sad. There's many, many people, and that's why I feel like when you give someone a twenty eight page application, mm -hmm. um, or you do tell them, you know, you encourage them to do it online and, and 
it's, you don't have somebody that knows exactly. You could make a mistake. You could mistake. omit something, make a mistake. And there's a lot of people that are sitting there going, no, what I had, um, I had a couple people. I had someone that um, she was on the list for a long time. Um, I, I went in and I said, I'm, I'm going to look you up. And um, I could see that she was looked at by three people at ASG who will make the decisions. And no one made a determination. It was five months later. So I sent ASG, the housing authorities have a separate email to them. So I sent um, an inquiry. I said, you know, listen, she, she's been on the list for this long. She's been in, in as an emergency for five months. Three people there have looked at her, but no one made a determination. And I said, can you please look into this? So they looked into it. And the next day got back to me and said, uh, she has been approved for preference and priority. And I said, let me ask you, when, at what date did she become an emergency today or when she applied as an emergency? And he said it went back to when she was, oh, when she applied. Good. So I went and looked, I looked, you know, I called her and I told her because she had been trying to call them and nobody ever called her back. And um, so anyway, so I called her and I said, I just, I just want to let you know, I just heard from ASG, I said I reached out to them because I had her information. I had her date of birth and her name, so I had gone and checked. And um, I said, you've just been um, approved for preference and priority. So she started to cry. So um, anyway, I told, I, she says, where, where do you think that would put me on the list? And I said, I don't know, we get so many people. But I said, I'll, I'll take a look. I said, it may, I may not see any change till tomorrow because they kind of do an update. Right. right. So I looked and she was number three. She went to number three. Yay. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. Thank um, you. Yeah. But again, not every office has a you. Right. And dealing with the state lately, if you are not like repeat, 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 repeat on numerous phones. And you don't drive them crazy. They she, don't call you back. She probably did. Maybe no one opened it up and looked at it to see the omission. Just to check box. Yeah, when you make out a CHAMP application, does anybody actually intake it and review it? Probably all done by computer. It, yeah, most people, we get very few applications um, that are mailed to us. Um, so most of them, they do it online mm -hmm. and they're on people's lists, but they're out there in cyber world, but they don't know, you Wait. know they don't know all the, but did you notice that. Eileen say the application is now down yeah. to 28 pages? Yeah. Wow. When you're homeless and you have a family, I can't even imagine. I, I can't. Yeah, there was another older couple too. They, um, they're on the list. Um, bad health situation on a second floor, dangerous. Um, I had kept his name and his date of birth, so I went back and checked on him. I knew he was about to become homeless, him and his wife. And um, I could see that um, there was an issue with ASG, that company that makes the decision also. I looked, they did not, he did not get local and he didn't get um, emergency priority. So I went in, I sat looking at all the documents that were uploaded. And um, there was one housing authority put in 76 pages of documents on this person. And I looked and I thought, who's this? There was a, a driver's license that showed a picture of a woman from, say, New Bedford or something. And so they saw that and, and said, no, it, um, no to local preference in Whitman, but his and his wife's his his and his wife's driver's license were in there in that seventy six pages. Mm -hmm. but, but the other one was them. just tossed in by mistake. Or? Yeah, might have been okay. Here's my pile, and then I went oh, and I picked right. up hers. You know what I mean? So that got that got uploaded in there. So then the emergency priority. I can't remember what happened with that, but he wasn't awarded that either, and so I. Once again, reached out to ASG. I said, you know, I got an issue with this. I, I, this man cannot do stairs. His doctor's letter's been in there for a long time. Um, so I said, can you please take a look at this one? So sure enough, he went, he says he has been approved for, I said, I said, I can understand why you didn't see why he didn't get local. 
when a housing authority dumps 76 pages into one category, like you should be putting, um, you should be putting local, like if they're looking for a local prior, local preference, that's where you put the driver's licenses. You know what I mean? You upload it and you put it there so it's there. Um, so when other housing authorities are just, when they're overwhelmed, this is what's happened. Mm -hmm. So he and they ended up looking at him and um, got back to me the next day and said, we have approved him for uh, local and priority. Nice. So, nice. so they are, they'll be housed pretty soon. Good. Thank God. But yeah, but no, I mean, there's a, so how many other people are lost right. in the system? Many. And you know, they keep saying they're helping us with this champ and champ's been a nightmare. It's been a nightmare. And some people can't do all that online no, stuff can't. too. They, they don't can't. know how to. They don't no. know how to. Unless they have someone to help them. Right. Right. <coughs> sad. It's sad. <sighs> Do I hear a motion to accept the executive director's report? I'll make a motion to accept the executive director's report. I'll second the motion. We accept the direct executive director's report. Motion by Patty, second by Terry to accept the executive director's report. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do we have any correspondence? No. I don't, other than to say we want to get revved up for October to see what CPA can do for us. You go get them. Oh, no, October's coming up pretty so quick. So what, what do you think money-wise that we would Probably be Probably the same at? as the last time. So about 100, yeah. I think? You, yeah. Yeah. We are now under new business. Hmm. Correspondence, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. New business? New business? Yeah, new business, that's us. I know. All right, so you want me to shoot for the um, steps and railings? Yeah, let's but let's look at the C CPA site, just peruse it if yep. you can, and well, just I see if there's anything like that. All right, so I'll, I'll um, Thursday, I have to go to the oral surgeon, so I'll probably, like, till. I told the girls, I said, I'm going to work from home um, when I get back. So I'll try to look at it that day. Yeah, it's got just, keyword functions yeah. that you can look at stuff. If you've been to an oral surgeon, you do not have to be working. <laughs> just go home. Oh, baby. Just go home. <laughs> we won't need the oral surgeon. We definitely want to find a project that's worthwhile to do and safety for the tenants and preservation. Right, for sure. Definitely. Yeah, I have my note in my direct in my um my board meeting folder too. Start looking. <laughs> yep. Even in July. Stop looking. Do you ladies have anything else under new business? I do not. Open forum. Does the audience have any questions, comments, or concerns? No, but it certainly I won't trust it. No matter what goes on in here. I never realized how since I've come here, but by sitting here tonight, the changes, I don't understand. <laughs> it is, <laughs> but yeah. It, and you know I really get to know anyone when I say something to you. I, I just would listen. Just the electrical costs alone. You can say whatever you want to say. I, the electrical costs are just so... Mm. No, I, I feel bad for anybody. Feel free to talk. I just. Well, just for real time, just saying, like tonight I learned a lot, and I'm glad you struck me being here. You can see how things from when I came in here. Very different. And how mm -hmm. it changes myself because you know I'm interested in what goes on. Right. And, you know, it, 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 I'm really sitting here, thank you tonight. I learned so much. And how many people? So many in need. But it's so sad. Every every time we have a meeting, that list is up. Yeah, well, Two to five thousand people I, from the month before. I think I asked about two weeks ago something to you because I had a friend whose husband has passed away and stuff. And I, it was about two or three weeks. I'm not sure because our lives are crazy. Yeah, really. So, I don't remember. <laughs> And he said to her, you know, how, how, how long did something like that to take? And she was about 3,000 away from trying to be in some place. And he threw out a number to me. I was astounded. 
I just did that. Oh, for, for, for yeah. the elderly list. Yeah, I think. Um, so I'm glad. Yeah, we have, about, we have about 3,000 elderly looking for elderly housing, but that doesn't include our under 60 disabled that are on that list. Oh, so I, I think it's probably, I think it's over 7,000 looking to get into elderly housing. And then today, you see the prices of houses. Well, it's it's from my own family, but I have a good size family. I don't even have, well, they've, they've been married for years, and some of my children are one of their kids are out of college married, so I can't even go out somewhere. Your yeah. old dad didn't get so overwhelmed yeah. today. Housing is definitely one of the biggest problems in this country, easily. Yep. That's all I say. I just, and I don't go outside and share with my family. No, you can it's share it. It's the truth. Oh. It, yeah, this is open meeting. This is, uh, this is, we're, this is we're under open forum, so yeah. you... Feel free to talk and say whatever you want. You could go on the it's, town it's, website and it's all there. It's scary. It is. So it is all right because I have a son who's very much into stuff like this and things. And he does a lot of, even though he's 65 this year, he does a lot of volunteering and helping things. And I'm not doing accolades from the extent that they'll ask me different questions. I think he's up to the answer. But when somebody puts a one bedroom, that you can tell they just took a section of their house and we'll stick a stove here, a sink there, and a refrigerator yeah. there. And, and that that's and it's it's on the third floor and it's eighteen hundred dollars a month with no utilities. And people are like, Oh my goodness, that's so cheap. Yeah. And it's like yeah. you're looking at the kitchen that's this your bathroom is bigger. But honestly, the sink's there, the stove's against this little wall, the refrigerator's over here, and there isn't a counter to be had. Yeah. It's sad. Very fortunate, that's all we want to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, uh, I think for one of these days, for one of these days. That's how I just finished our scene. I never, I'm so, but then she knows that I was thinking to leave because I don't care. Yeah. yeah, my mom was in elderly housing, and she was grateful too. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably got to get a part time job. <laughs> well, you'd, wa you'd want to be in state housing if you got a part time job because we wouldn't take the first um, 20 hours at minimum wage, would be exempt at, the, at our state properties. If you're 62 and older in a state property, you can work in the first 20 hours at minimum wage. So it's $15,600. We do not count as income. Really? Yes, but the federal government's different. So oh, I have no income changes. I should be doing enough. Yeah, I see. What I do is but how the court would be different. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're doing more you, than that. You just be you. Be <laughs> well, with all the volunteer work she does over there, she right. She does, she does at least probably twenty hours. <laughs> Ruthie, just be you. <laughs> yeah. I look at you in my age and stuff like that, and I just say that I, that's what keeps me going because I love to do different things. Your reward will be in heaven. Right. <laughs> and you're getting the express it's elevator true. up. Right. It's, it's true. true. It's true. Ladies, number question number 14. Do I'll I make a motion to adjourn? I'll second the motion. Motion by Patty, second by Terry. This meeting is hereby adjourned.